This common looking device is probably responsible for saving more lives, certainly in the mining industry, than any other single invention. This is the flame safety lamp. Hello, I'm Jim Humphrey. I'm a registered professional mining engineer, and I'd like to show you how to disassemble and maintain your flame safety lamp. Invented about 200 years ago, the flame safety lamp was designed to allow miners to carry an open flame into a mine containing explosive methane gas without causing an explosion. Originally used for illumination, in more recent years, it has been adapted as a testing device. Although these are no longer allowed in U.S. mines, they still continue to be used in some countries. In fact, a type of flame safety lamp is used to transport the Olympic flame on commercial airliners. I used lamps just like this one early in my career and in school received training on the care and maintenance of flame safety lamps. Obviously, if you have one of these, you should never attempt to use it in an explosive environment unless it's been thoroughly inspected by an authorized person is permitted by law. But if you're like me and you've collected a few curios and you want to take care of them, take them apart to clean and preserve them, you'll find this interesting. So let's disassemble a modern flame safety lamp. The bottom of the lamp, called the font assembly, unscrews from the upper half the bonnet assembly, but it's held by a magnetic lock. By placing a strong magnet on these two pins and turning the font assembly to the left, it will unscrew. Sometimes you have to wiggle the font assembly to release the lock. You can hear it click. Don't turn the font assembly to the right so far as to tighten it. Hold the lamp horizontally so the parts don't fall out and remove the font assembly. Then remove the globe carefully as it is made from special glass. Also note the orientation of any markings in the globe. Then the upper baffle ring, which contains the uh, two asbestos gaskets. And then there are two gauze cones, the inner and the outer. They serve the same purpose, but are redundant for safety. Gauze cones are what allow the air in for the flame, but prevent the flame from escaping. Take care when handling the gauze cones. They're very fragile. Finally, the expansion ring, which is designed to allow for the expansion of the globe due to the heat of the flame. Here, we can see the magnetic lock. Because this magnet isn't quite strong enough, I have to encourage the lock with a slight touch. The font assembly contains the fuel compartment, which is accessed through the fuel port. On top of the font assembly is the wick and flint. There's a small screw which can be removed to replace the flint. Also on top of the font assembly is a lower baffle ring and gasket. On the bottom is the wick height adjustment screw. The height of the wick can be adjusted through turning the screw. And the flint striker, which can be pushed up to the height of the wick and then snapped to light the wick. Reassembly is pretty much the reverse of the assembly. I'll set the lower baffle ring gasket on the font assembly, then reassemble the bonnet assembly. First the expansion ring, then the two gauze cones. And the upper baffle ring and globe. I carefully line up the globe with the lower baffle ring and screw on the font assembly. I want to be careful not to fully compress the expansion ring, so I don't tighten the font assembly more than a few clicks of the magnetic safety. Well, that's interesting, don't you think? A real piece of history. I hope you'll be able to keep your flame safety lamp around for future generations to enjoy. I'm Jim Humphrey. Be safe out there. Thanks.